All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am joined by Dan Seidman, who is in slightly chillier, I would say, Chicago, right? We were there a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a great road tro uh, ship, tro road tro we were on, the yeah, road show. Absolutely. Well, I hope things have warmed up a little because it was definitely chilly outside. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah. And and Dan is the managing director of Read Emotions uh, on a mission to give people access to information about others, which has never before been known what they are thinking and feeling. Uh, Dan is a certified behavior analyst who leads the North American Licensed Delivery Center for Ekman's global company offering highly interactive experience, which where learners engage in a special video tool and hands-on coaching to help them learn to spot hidden emotions. This is a skill I got down that was previously offered what to CIA, FBI, Interpol, TSA, and, and law enforcement. Yeah, yeah. We had to redesign it so that business professionals, particularly sales pros, could use it. Yeah. And Dan has been called the trainer to the world's sales trainers, globally recognized authority on influence, and the author of The Ultimate Guide to Sales Training, a 544-page uh, encyclopedia, yeah. Best Practices, as well as four other books. And uh, when you're not doing that, uh, before that, you were winning gold medals playing for the U.S. basketball team. And uh, and like most elite athletes and business pros, you love winning, can't stand losing. So let's talk about. So just tell me first, Dan, tell me how you came across this uh, this capability and why did you think that this is something that needs to be brought to, to a, a kind of mass audience, if you like? Oh, it's a great question, and it's really a fascinating answer, too. I was chasing Dr. Paul Ekman, the author of this science, for over 12 years when I read about him in Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink. Mm. So when you see something, how do you know it's real or not? And, uh, and so because Dr. Ekman was making so much money with law enforcement and military intelligence, he wasn't paying much attention to business professionals. And I continued to pursue him. He finally put together a global organization to train people. And now we're training people in HR practices, right? This, this would work for interviews as well as coaching. And, uh, and, and my favorite, your favorite, of course, helping sales pros improve uh, performance, especially with buyers. Mm -hmm. So, so tell me, how do, how does this how does this work, and particularly how does this uh, work when you're in a both an in person and a virtual world today? Yeah, the 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 uh, virtual world is really important because there's a huge trend away from telephones mm -hmm. and starting to use video now, which is fortunate for us. We're, it's a very visual science. There are seven universal emotions. And when you see them show up on somebody's face, if you understand why it showed up, it changes the conversation. And so that's where this science meshes with uh, dialogues. Uh, if if it's being used for interviewing, it would be completely different than what it right. would be used if you were a sales manager coaching your rep and seeing thing, something show up on their face. It would be completely different if you're calling on a prospect and they showed anger, for example. Right. So um, what, what are those seven emotions? And now I'm all paranoid about what emotions <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm displaying right now. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> that's OK. I, I, I know you're happy to see me, OK? I so am. that's the emotion I'm picking up right now. Uh, surprise is the first one. So this is when something, there's sudden movement, it causes surprise. And we actually call surprise a transitory emotion it always moves on to something else quickly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I'm surprised because somebody accosts me in the street and I look down and they're holding a weapon and asking me for money, my surprise might turn to fear. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I go Liam Neeson on him and and, uh, <laughs> and he becomes fearful and surprised. <laughs> and but um, So it's a transitory emotion. Then next we have fear itself, which is threat of harm, any kind of threat of harm. It might be emotional threat might be an actual physical threat. Uh, anger is the third emotion. Uh, and this is the thing, I mentioned this at the roadshow, 
This mm-hmm. might be the single most important moment in our workshops, whether it's two, three hours or five day global certification. The, the trigger for anger is the blocking of one's goals. When somebody's mm-hmm. goals get blocked, that's why they get angry. This is huge for people, both professionally and personally. Um, so blocking of goals, that's how anger surfaces. Disgust is the next emotion. And disgust is something that's, uh, it's just something awful. It, it either smells bad or it looks bad or it sounds bad. So anything that's offensive uh, is going to create disgust in you. Contempt is the next emotion and contempt is a feeling of superiority. Mm. So we see that in somebody's face when one side of their mouth goes up. It's the only universal emotion that that shows up on one half of the face. Usually everything shows up on your face, but contempt is very easy to pick up. And then we have sadness, which is the loss of a person or an object. Mm -hmm. So in our training, we have a uh, a clip of a woman who is uh, uh, on the back of a tsunami in Thailand. She probably lost friends and family and property. And she has this intense look of sadness on her face. And then the final emotion, the seventh one is happiness. It's anything mm-hmm. that gives you pleasure. So those are the seven emotions. So in, uh, you know, particularly in, in sales, I would say probably the, which ones do you think show up the most or, or are there ones that show up more often than others? Cause I would say fear is probably a great one because often, um, when somebody's engaged in a sales call, the other person on, on the other side, there's a reticence, there's a fear, there's a bit of reservation because they don't quite know what to expect. Right. People that are being sold to are in a bit of a state. They're not sure what's going to happen. Is this person going to be pushy with me? Is the price going to be really high? So actually, depending on where in the dialogue you are would affect which emotion would surface. Mm-hmm. If somebody... For, if you gave me a price that was very high, I right. might feel a flicker of anger. Mm-hmm. I think that's ridiculous. There's no way I'm going to pay that much for this for this product or service. Yeah. So in that setting, um, it, it's just it's just a matter of where you are in the conversation. Right. Like I said from the beginning, it changes the path. It changes the dialogue when you see something. You have to stop and address it. Mm-hmm. But and and here's a key thing: you cannot point out how they're feeling. <laughs> That would creep people out. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, so, so then, how? Let me ask you: How obvious are these? So, when you go through your training, so how obvious and how easy are for they to spot? Or are some, or are they on a scale? Like, could I? Obviously, I can demonstrate anger quite overtly if I wanted, but subtly, are are, are there some that are very subtle? Um, they're probably all equally easy to adopt. And especially for salespeople or people that are working nose to nose with individuals all the time, uh, they're easy to pick up because we actually know what they are. We just have never had them identified for Mm. us. So uh, I'll give you a really good example. Uh, Dr. Ekman used to have a a CD that had this training video on it, and he switched to online and in-person training now. But I was flying to Los Angeles with my son, and we watched over the the video training a couple times during the flight. And when we got there, uh, we were in a store and a person was getting angry with the manager of the store. And my son, who was 12 years old, said, Dad, that man's showing disgust. Oh. The owner was showing disgust at the suggestion of how he should fix things. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's pretty good. The, the learning curve is very, very short on this skill. Mm-hmm. And there's only seven things to learn. And they become really obvious. The problem with them is a lot of them flicker so fast. You do have to practice a little bit to pick them up. Right. So basically, you got to pay attention. So it's another great. It's another great uh, tool for you if you, especially as a salesperson, if you are going to put the work in and actually pay attention to what's going on. You know, for years we've been teaching people to try and listen, listen properly and validate. Mm-hmm. Now it's it what you're talking about now is also focusing on picking up on these cues too. Yeah. And, and that's the exact phrase we use. We say, you now learn to pay attention. It's more than just learning. Um, This is, it's a really fun thing to learn because all of a sudden you're seeing and experiencing things you hadn't had in the past 
and it kind of gives you a boost. Uh, this is, by the way, an emotional intelligence skill. Dr. Ekman has been a, acknowledged by uh, Daniel Goleman, who's the father of emotional intelligence, as a significant contributor to mm. EI, emotional intelligence. So most salespeople should be getting experience uh, or getting some training in EI now. But we see this doubles as both an EI skill and a very potent tactic, a technique to use when you're selling. Yeah. And tell me, Dan, how how does this work, you know, cross-culturally? Because oftentimes, you know, people from different backgrounds, different cultures or whatever may have may have different ways of reacting and, and different. So how do you pick up on the cues when when there's so many, especially in, in the environment that we work in here in the States, there's so many people from so many different backgrounds. Right. So in, in, uh, in Dr. Ekman's body of work, he's probably had 200 validated uh, uh, studies and tests and instruments built around reading these seven universal emotions. They call him universal because he realized that they work anywhere in the world. Uh, but a good example that's almost an exception but isn't is the Asian culture. So uh, it used to be in the Asian culture, people were taught to you suppress your feelings. And I don't know if you remember, John, in the Beijing Olympics, mm -hmm. uh, because the support staff and the people doing face to face help uh, had grown up in a culture where they never smiled. Mm -hmm. They had to be taught months ahead of the Olympics to smile for people, whether they were guests or, you know, or fans or whether they were athletes or coaches, they had to learn to smile. Well, Ekman wanted to test the Asian culture in particular. So this is kind of a fun, uh, fun moment. He has uh, an um, American, a white student, and, and there's a series of these tests done with an Asian, a native Asian student that are in the university together. And they watch a video of a really gruesome surgery. So, of course, uh, disgust and maybe a little bit of fear is showing up during the time the Asian kid barely shows any emotions because he's taught in the presence of others not to show them. But when he sees the videos alone and when they all tested alone, they showed extensive uh, flashing of the emotions. So the only area where there's really an exception to the being able to pick it up from, from people is that about 5% of the population, uh, psychopaths and sociopaths, are so adept and they have so much at stake that they are really good at hiding their emotions. So they're, they're accepted. <laughs> so there you go. So if nobody can read you, then, uh, you know, perhaps you may be on the question, <laughs> question whether you're a sociopath or a psychopath. So how is, how do you actually train this Dan? Well, what we do is uh, we pretest everybody to see if they have any skills at all. So we'll show these video clips. It, it flashes in a, a half of a second, and we'll see if people guess it right. And in turn, after we show the faces and all the structures of the face in which muscles are moving, um, we go and show you actual video clips of maybe athletes that made a mistake or somebody mm -hmm. in a live interview. Uh, like we have an interview with uh, Whoopi Goldberg in The View with Pete Buttigieg, uh, where he shows uh, an emotion with her because of something she did. And these people don't know they're exhibiting these emotions. Mm. Uh, so in some of these corporate settings, when we see this, we go, ooh, we probably need to talk to uh, their communications people about coaching their CEO or an executive because they're flashing these emotions and don't know it. So there's a lot of interactive elements. And we show video clips uh, from the movie Inside Out, which is Dr. Ekman was the expert on that, that mm. film. If you remember, it was a little girl who had the motions all talking in her head. And, uh, and telling her how to act. And that was his dream film to do. And he pulled it off. And I think uh, this summer, the sequel to Inside Out is, is coming out as well. So there's a lot of ways we train people to play with this concept. So then, I mean, the interesting part about this is then obviously, uh, oftentimes your words, maybe even your tone of voice could be at odds with the expression on your face. So how you're really feeling, right? Yes, and actually there's two halves to this training. Uh, I, I've trained uh, about three dozen Vistage CEO advisory groups around the country. 
And we only teach them a three hour workshop on reading the emotions and responding to the emotions in the face. But if we were training other people uh, and we had more time, we would teach the other half that you're describing, which is a law enforcement uh, practice of knowing if somebody's telling the truth or not. If the words don't match the face, that's when you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And so that's when they learn to dig deeper. So that's like the second half of our training we do. It's related to law enforcement. And it's uh, it's about truth telling. Yeah. And uh, and when you have uh, worked with with salespeople on this, what ha what difference has this made to their ability to be able to read their buyer and really like reach reach and and connect with the buyer? Because I think that's the end of the day, isn't it? You really want to make a connection, so you want to be in tune with what they're really feeling. Right. So you and I grew up with. Uh... A, a common practice, which was mirroring and matching, right? So yep. we want to emulate what the buyer is going through. This goes way beyond that, whether you buy into it or not, it's a significant improvement because we know what the person's actually feeling so we can address it. So uh, most recently I, I was training people in human resources. I used the example of doing an interview and, and people lie a lot in interviews. So having some of these skills probably <laughs> can help you for making a, a bad decision in hiring. But if you're recruiting a sales rep, for example, and you ask them about their previous job and they show a flicker of anger, we know, hmm, this is what we call a hot spot. Let's let's dig a little bit further. So if you remember the trigger for anger is a blocking of one's goals, mm -hmm. I might ask a question like, hey, did something happen in your previous job that kept you from being as successful? as you thought you were going to be. And maybe right. that's why you're interviewing here with us today. And just see people, their face gets more relaxed. The tension goes away. They're in a moment with you. You're both matching uh, and, and your feelings are in sync with one another. And they're more likely to tell you the truth or give you details that you need to know. Yeah, it's 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 really fascinating, Dan, because you know the way people are today saying, oh, you know, be authentic and do this and do that and all these kind of, I mean, they've almost turned it into gimmicks right now. But what, you, what you're talking about here is really being able to understand what's going on behind. And I think part of the problem is sometimes, you know, we talk about the buyer as if they're not a human being mm -hmm. uh, or the buyers as if they're not individuals with with different motivations and maybe, you know, maybe different different things riding on the deal. Right. And, and actually... Um, if you want to get better at knowing what's really going on in a, in a setting like we're discussing, either uh, uh, using a video, for example. In fact, a lot of people uh, do early rounds of hiring for sales professionals with a video clip, maybe do a pitch or sell mm -hmm. whatever, sell the pencil yeah. or something like that. Right. Um, we can go back and look at videos and say, like, oh, did you see that? I missed that when we were live. And mm -hmm. now you have a resource, as long as you have permission to record it, you have a resource where you can actually practice with the, this, learning what you learn for this tool and be able to enhance your skills that much further. Mm -hmm. And just from you personally, obviously, I mean, you've been you've been doing sales and, and training salespeople and sales coach uh, uh, trainers and that for, for many, many years. What 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 difference has this made to you? I mean, because let's face it, I mean, you've been you've you've done a 50, 544 page encyclopedia. You know all <laughs> sales inside out. What difference has this made to you? Well, um, I'll tell you one thing. This might be a a, a conversation for another day. <laughs> if if I wanted to train a sales team and they didn't want to spend all the time on a whole sales practice, uh, a, a whole sales process, I would say learning this skill and dealing with objections if you start eliminating objections the one step one piece of the sales process that says how do i manage resistance from buyers that flows through the whole sales process all the dialogues you get rid of that and you're going to go further down path the path towards a close you learn to read emotions in people and you're going to be able to get in better sync with them ask them better questions and get further down the path to the close. So those are two things I think really make a difference. This being one of the top two reading emotions in the face that I would teach if I was, if somebody said, I don't have the money or the time, I just go, hey, objection handling and reading emotions. There's your two 
biggest bangs for the buck. Yeah, and just a la- and just a last question. As we when we started out, we were saying about this, uh, you know, working in a remote and, and virtual world, and I and I think you said so. Your expression, I mean, it's obviously important to try and get people on camera uh, if you're talking to them. And I think nowadays, you know, most people most people are comfortable with doing that if if you if you establish some trust. But for me, it just seems like such a key part now to for you as a seller, whatever, to get very used to reading people on a screen as opposed to just being able to read people in person, but being able to focus on people on the screen, because sometimes you'll see we don't. We don't focus on the person on the screen. You know, we get distracted or whatever. But now it becomes even more important to be more focused. Well, here's a tip about that, because if I'm looking at you, we're on uh, we're talking to each other. I'm watching your face because I'm supposed to be watching your face. But if we're in a group Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 maybe I'm asking you questions and somebody else speaks, I turn and look at the person speaking. You can't do that anymore. Mm. You need to look at the person receiving the information so you can see their reaction to it. So there's some changes you have to make uh, in order to absorb information that's critical to you. So those are there's there's little tips like that that enhance the ability to apply this. But it's all pretty easy to uh, to put into practice. I mean, th- this yeah. is the most fun thing I've trained in forever. You know, I train every step of the sales process yeah, yeah, yeah. all over the world. This is so cool. The light bulbs always going off overhead, right? The aha moments and all that. It's a really fun thing to apply. Yeah, and that's a great point. I didn't think of that. That's a great point. Is yeah, because traditionally we, um, when somebody speaks, you turn to look at the person who's speaking, and if it's one of your colleagues who's speaking, you're missing out on how it's how it's being received. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So yeah, those are su- subtle changes of behavior. Uh, so Dan, tell me a little bit about how people can learn more about this and perhaps get trained even on this. The uh, the Read Emotions website has a lot of information. Um, probably the best starting point would be to go there or contact me directly through the website and get our ten page white paper. I think you did. You have a peek at that. I did. I did. It's yeah. excellent, and and we will include all the links below this video. Oh, cool! A massive amount of detail in the ten pages on on all the science behind this, the history behind this, some really fun stories in there. So that's a really good resource. It's better than reading any of Dr. Ekman's books because he's an academic guy and they're kind of like the uh, uh, like the turtles slogging through peanut butter speed yeah. reading. So uh, yeah, you, you, you probably want to spend time at the website or contact me and I'd be happy to have uh, talk to people about working with their team. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I would encourage you, as I said, the links will be below. I'd encourage you to go and, and check it out. And I encourage you to reach out to Dan. As as Dan said, he's been doing this. He's been doing all aspects of this a long, long time. And this is the most fun he's ever had. So there you go. That should, that's enough of an endorsement for me. So <laughs> uh, listen, uh, thanks again, Dan. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you, John.